in the outside Sam the Record Man in Hamilton, Ontario. Uh, Cinderella's in so inside doing an in-store, which is part of the deal. We talked about earlier about in-stores and how the fans are important and stuff. So we're out here, and fans are important to, to your show. I could cut that out. Welcome back to the Power Hour, and we're just sitting here. What are we doing here? Powerizing. We're powerizing with Gatorade, but we're not supposed to say that. Papa. I'm trying to promote a card game. Hammer. Working. Hammer. Oh no, they say commercial Papa. a lot here. It's really mean. Okay, what's well, a great commercial and a great product, isn't it? All right. Uh, a few weeks ago, we talked about a band called Pig, P-I-G. Yes. And uh, let's, let, 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 let's, let's talk about that. Let's Tom know about that. Okay, well, there was this uh, little thing that I wanted to do. I really like playing cover songs. You know, whenever I'm practicing, that's all I do is play cover songs. And Ricky Rackman is probably one of my best friends in the whole world. And so was Tammy because they're best friends, and you know. So anyway, uh, hey, excuse me. We, we were playing hockey together the whole time that I was off. They had never played hockey. I used to play in high school. I said, let's get together and play hockey. They're big Kings fans. So uh, we started playing, and uh, I was like, dude, since you own so many clubs, let me put together some kind of band. And uh, Stephen Pierce, he wanted to do an album and wanted me to play drums on it. I said, dude, let's just do a cover band and go out and play some songs. So we got Stephen Piercy, Tracy Guns, uh, Kyle Kyle from Bang Tango, we call him Krell Krell, and, uh, and we got Tammy Down. And we put together the, just this cool band. We did old Sabbath songs and old Zeppelin and, and uh, just, you know, tons of Sex Pistols. We did all these old songs and I was like, dude, I can get everybody together. Let's just do it. So I talked to Steven and we got it together and Ricky said, all right, we'll go play the Cat House in Phoenix. So he rented a tour bus and got us a couple of hotel, you know, a bunch of hotel rooms. And we all shared rooms like the old <laughs> days, you know. And we went out and we just played this club and it holds 2,000 and we've sold over 3,500 tickets. Wow. And it was just amazing. I mean, we had so much fun there, you know, just it was, it was incredible just playing old cover tunes knowing that you didn't have to stay there and do that for, you know, forever. And we all just had the greatest time in our lives. Well, let's play some Faster Pussycat. We'll play Faster Poison Ivy. Baby. And uh, we'll Rock. come back and talk with more. we got one more to do. Right. Apparently we're ready now. You're watching the Pepsi Power, the loudest hour in television, and uh, we are here, and we're in Hamilton, Ontario. You guys, tell me about tell me about being on the road because, you know, touring at this level is like a whole different trip. And what's what's it like? What's a day like? A day is you know we pull into town usually about seven or eight o'clock in the morning, you know, and just crash for a couple of hours. We've been riding all night. And just get up and we do stuff like this. <laughs> <laughs> we, you know, we go through in stores. We like to meet our fans and stuff every day. Is that important too to tip really for those important. meet and greets yeah. in those in stores? Oh yeah. yeah. To talk to the fans. Really yeah, you, you have to know. I mean, what they want to, anything that they want to, you know, know or or what they tell you what's happening because we don't know what's happening out in the street. I mean, if a kid comes up and says, "I never heard that you guys were playing in town," then we know that it's not being publicized the right way. Or if they say we don't see your videos enough or whatever because that's our only contact of you know the fans and more importantly it's, it's than really that good. though is that we get to hear what they think about what we're doing right so if they yeah that's well, does that's it, what the contact with the fans that and the, and just you know the fact that it means something to them you know to to meet a band that they like and i think that it's really uncool when band when bands blow off fans you know yeah there's a lot of times that fans will give out after shows to a show. I mean, like the other night we were in there for like three hours signing stuff because a lot of bands, I mean, I know when I used to go to concerts, I would get an after show pass or something, you know, through the record, whoever, yo, can I get a pass? And usually you get road guides that are cool, they're like, yeah, man, I really want to do this for the rest of my life. And they give you a pass and you go and hanging out and you're waiting in a room and you're waiting and waiting and like an hour and a half later, some dork comes out and says, sorry, the band's gone. They're not going to come out. And it's like, we would never do that. Right. You know, unless we had to, like there was a two million mile drive and we really couldn't do it, we wouldn't give out passes. You know, and I just think it's very wrong to do that. Let's leave with a video that, uh, why don't we leave with one of yours? Have we played all of theirs yet? No? Well, let's leave with one of yours. Who wants to play one off of our fourth album? Because by the time this airs... <laughs> <laughs> No, let's 
just leave with Heartbreak Station? Should we do that? Okay. Okay. Bye. See ya. Hey, try, try this. This is, this is better than the oranges. Andy, give me a camera. Much better. That's why he's got the car.